Kia ora whanau. Uh, thanks so much for joining us tonight for evening prayer. I'm Matt and this is Rach. Uh, we hope you are holding up okay after a pretty massive week, uh, just amidst all the adjustments again, heading back into level four lockdown. I guess we're hoping and we're praying that we can kind of move back down through those levels uh, fairly quickly, but also safely too. Mm. Um, I actually ended up taking myself to get a COVID test uh, just the other day um, because I was at Auckland Hospital with my dad a couple of Saturdays ago, which thankfully has come in negative. So that's a relief. Just a bit of a reminder, personal reminder to me that of just how uh, we are navigating these anxious times again. So I guess in light of all this, we felt it would just be a great thing really to offer some space to pause uh, and to pray together amongst all this, all this disruption and change, uh, just to bring all of that, bring everything before God uh, who sustains us in all the seasons of our lives. And this theme for uh, this next season of evening prayer is all about encounters with Jesus. And we hope you guys will be blessed and encouraged by it. On Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays then at 9 p.m., different people from the St. Paul's team, not just stuck with us, <laughs> will be focusing on encounters that people have as they meet Jesus in the Gospels. And we'll ground it in prayer based on how this relates to our lives. So the prayers that we use, certainly that we use, will follow a rhythm and a structure. Um, some of them will come up on the screen and you can pray the bits in bold or any of them um, because we won't know either way. Uh, so you can pray out loud with us or in the silence of your heart. Uh, but we will know. We won't know. Jesus will know. <laughs> um, so as we begin, we might like to, we won't like to, you might like to too, light a candle. I have to concentrate on this bit. This is our high tech part. <laughs> to remind you of the light of Christ, which is never overcome by any kind of darkness. Etifano, may the light of Christ be with you. And also with you. So let's take a moment to still our hearts, to slow down our minds, and invite God's presence to be with us as we reflect on the past day. Lord, it is night. The night is for stillness. Let us be still in the presence of God. It is night after a long day. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. The night is dark. Let our fears of the darkness of the world and of our lives rest in you. The night is quiet. Let the quietness of your peace enfold us, all dear to us, and all who have no peace. The night heralds the dawn. Let us look expectantly to a new day, new joys, new possibilities. Amen. So we have a reading now from Luke 19 verses 1 to 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he's gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Thanks, Rach. Um, yeah, a week ago, I was on a course um, on suicide prevention, and at one point, the facilitator said that those of us in the church, Christians, are hope brokers. And those two words really, um, yeah, really struck me, actually. And then she went on to say that as Christians, it's who we are and what we deal in. And in contrast, uh, to this, we have Zacchaeus. Uh, he's kind of a different kind of broker, if you like. Uh, he's someone who deals in hopelessness rather than hope. 
Uh, he is constantly reminding those that he takes money from of the oppression uh, and the control and the fear and just the, the violence of the Roman Empire, really. And so on the one hand, Zacchaeus, um, on the outside, he's living this you know, financially and materially wealthy, secure life. Um, but as a result, he's also living a secondhand life, I think, uh, as an outsider, as an outcast. Uh, he's a traitor to his very own people. And what I really love is that Jesus knows deep down that Zacchaeus longs for something more than that. Even if Zacchaeus really can't see, him, see it for himself at the time, uh, Jesus can see that he longs to be found and to be taken home um, back to his own people. Uh, and as Jesus kind of cheekily, but also like controversially invites himself into Zac Zacchaeus's house, Zacchaeus realizes that he's lost something so precious uh, that no money can, can buy it back. Uh, and more importantly, he encounters the person who creates new life and makes uh, people whole uh, wherever and whenever he is welcomed in. Uh, Zacchaeus's home becomes a home of redemption, really, and restoration. His life is reoriented uh, and given a present and a future hope, which I think is really cool. You know, Jesus shows him hospitality, um, care, belonging, acceptance, forgiveness, uh, and I think also gives him a new identity, uh, a second chance. And all of that helps to build hope for him in the present, but also in his future. And what I really love about this encounter with Jesus is that it brings a real change into his present realities. Uh, it doesn't just lead to like a, you know, a change of heart or, a, or you know, or a guilty conscience, but um, it leads to kind of true amends uh, from what he has taken from others. And so Zacchaeus, he finds himself like uncharacteristically like joyfully willing to give back his ill-gotten gains because he knows that he is now seen, he knows he's now loved, he's valued that he has actually come home because he's found something way more valuable. And so this encounter with Jesus restores him too, uh, even more importantly, to the community from which he had been, had been made a, an outcast from. So I think this is an incredibly um, hopeful story. You know, Jesus' presence radically reorients uh, and restores Zacchaeus's life on so many, so many different levels. Um, and Jesus never stops wanting to do that uh, in our lives, even those who have been in the church or have been Christians for, for many years. So I want to ask two questions. Uh, where, what, or who are you drawing your hope from at the moment? And where are you lacking hope? And I want to encourage you maybe just to spend a moment uh, waiting and listening to the Lord, and then maybe invite Jesus to speak to you about your current sources of hope or just where you need some fresh hope um, right now. As a way of responding, we're going to close with a final prayer. Jesus, thank you that you are my true home. Come and invade my space, dwell with me. I welcome your presence, your peace, your justice, your grace and your hope. Would you reorder our hearts, minds and lives? Would you reshape our priorities towards you? Please also, God, make your presence known to those who need you most right now, to those who feel lost or beyond your reach, those who feel undeserving or isolated, who are alone or far from you. Would you show them that you see them, know them, and can help them find new life and peace? And finally, God, would you show us who we can be hope brokers for this week and how to do that with wisdom and care and creativity. In the week ahead, help us to choose faith over fear and trust over control. Keep us thankful and hopeful and useful. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Join us for evening prayer again on Wednesday and Friday at 9. Uh, yeah, ka kite, ko marie. Ko marie. See through.
things like you do God I look to you you're where my help comes from give me wisdom you know just what to do and I will love you Lord my strength and I will love you Lord my shield